everybody and welcome to Abu Dhabi's Live, a show where we get to sit down with some of South Africa's most amazing and successful leaders and entrepreneurs. So in today's episode, we are joined by Charles Savage, who is the CEO of Purple Group and Easy Equities. Charles, thank you so much for, for being part of um, Abu Dhabi's Live. It's so lucky to be here. Thanks for having me on. Awesome stuff. So Charles, I want to go into your entrepreneurial journey. Maybe you can share with us where you actually started and also some of the challenges that you incurred as an entrepreneur, especially when we are during the Global Entrepreneurship Month, hey? Yeah, so I mean the journey started uh, back after university where I qualified an accountant and as an IT uh, professional. Oh. And back then the internet was exploding. There mm. were lots of opportunities and everyone felt that the world was going to be changed by online e-commerce. Mm. Mm. And I ended up developing uh, some of South Africa's first e-commerce sites, everything from bookstores wow. um, through to a store that sold seeds and wine and everything else. Wow. And by learning more about other people's businesses, I became more interested in creating my own business. And I guess that's where the interest started and the journey started. And I've always used IT as a way to enable my entrepreneurship. So awesome. Awesome. it's been a, a double-edged journey, mm -hmm. one uh, driven by some passionate projects that I've wanted to do my whole life, and Easy Equities is one of those. Interesting. Um, and the other, always trying to use IT to enable that business opportunity so we could create efficiencies and scale and mm -hmm. deliver the services to a broader audience. But was there that passion within you to start a fintech company such as Easy Equities though? Look, I've been doing this for 20 years when fintech wasn't even popular. Yep, you know, yep. We <laughs> built South Africa's first uh, CFD trading platform back in 2000 mm. and then there wasn't a word called fintech. Back then yeah, it was just yep, tech. Sure. Today we call it fintech and uh -huh. it's much sexier than it was back then. But <laughs> Easy Equities was born out of the deep desire to democratize access to sure. all things investing and fundamentally I've been in the industry for 20 years now mm. and there's always been a promise of a broad based participation in investment services in South Africa Correct. and over the last 20 years the demographic of the average person who owns shares hasn't changed predominantly sure. it's white old men mm. and so in 2013 I was tired of doing things the conventional way yeah, and yeah. wanted to create a platform that challenged the conventional way and did things differently. Mm, mm, and mm. in order to understand what we needed to do differently, we had to understand what the friction points were for our customers. Okay. And in unpacking those friction points, mm. we came to the conclusion that fundamentally everything needed to be easier. Sure. The platform experience needed to be easier, the onboarding needed to be easier, the language that we used needed to be easier, so easy to understand. Um, yeah. everything that we delivered. And so hence the name, Easy Equities, oh, was cool. born and the platform was launched uh, just over five years ago. It was launched 27th of October 2014. Sure. So we're just five years old and we're making so an extraordinary been... difference in uh, Many young South lives Africans' well. lives. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm also on Easy Equities. I find it so easy to use actually. Eh? And it, hopping it onto app every day, every morning, actually checking out how actually the stocks are actually taking place and also how can I buy onto new ones. That's an easy platform to actually use. And it's a positive addiction, right? Yeah, no, you definitely. <laughs> we did, we never we, thought um, it would be as addictive mm. as, it wa as it is. Yeah, I mean, when people. we built the platform, we thought that our customers would pitch up five, six times a year, mm. buy shares, sell shares, check on their portfolio. On average, our customers pitch up once every three days. And we've got over 110,000 active customers. Sure. Now, that's an extraordinary engagement, uh, level of engagement for a financial services company. I mean, typically, you don't log into your bank every three days. No, definitely. Over definitely. payday, we're all in. <laughs> when the money's gone, we're all out. Sure, With sure. With Easy Equities, we get an opportunity to talk to our customers every three days. Hmm. And in, able, in being able to talk to them, we have to tell them something interesting. So uh, it, uh, it means that our content strategy needs to be on, on cue as well. Yeah, we have to yeah. give you a reason to come back. Mm. Uh, there need to be things to check on. And and places where you can learn new skills. No, definitely. And and that has actually got you an, a nomination in, um, I think it was in 2018, uh, um, for the South Africa Startup Awards. How did yeah. that, that feel, you know, getting nominated for I mean, I the, the FinTech company? I love winning awards. Um, <laughs> sure. We Who won doesn't? A, eh? We've won a lot of them. <laughs> we, I, think, I think we last count we've won 17 global awards for best wow. FinTech, best startup, most sure. innovative business in South Africa two years in a row. Mm. Uh, but the real awards, and if you like rewards, are our customers. Mm. Um, sure. I mean, when you look at the demographic of our customer base, 65% of them are young South Africans under the age of 37. 95% mm. mm. of them are first time investors, so they've never made an investment prior to us on it's the just platform. Like me. And yeah. importantly, oh. 
they are demographically representative of the South African population. So they're black South Africans. Mm, mm. And I, th I honestly believe that we're the only financial services business operating in the investment landscape that can say that. Mm. And when we designed the platform, that was the target audience we were going after. Yeah, um, yeah. And so it's the stories of young South Africans taking up investing for the first time mm, that mm, still mm, they give me mm. goosebumps. Sure, I mean, no, definitely. We've got every day we hear about investors like you, investors, mm. um, younger investors, 12 year old kids running portfolios, uh, minimum wage earners that work at big corporates that rather than buying the company coffee, sure. save five rand every day and buy a share every day mm. and everything in, in between. And it's been an extraordinary journey, one that mm. we're having so much fun with. Mm. And mm. importantly, I think the differentiator in what we do is that at the center of everything we do are the people we serve mm. and the people that serve the company. And mm. there's a, a huge sense of purpose in what we do. Sure, doing. sure. One of the cool things that we actually love about it is usually the reward system, actually. Yeah. So in the reward system, you actually give people, you know, um, a bit of cash into their accounts in yeah. terms of um, them referring people to others. So maybe yeah. walk us through that. How do you actually go yeah, about Yeah, so one of the, if you think about the barriers to entry. Sure. Um, one of the biggest barriers to entry, and let's, let's just put aside the fact that pretty much anyone can open an account, because it's not difficult. You need to have a South African ID and your account pretty sure. much gets opened. Mm -hmm. But the next big barrier to entry is a, uh, the, the fear that I have of losing money. Mm. And oh, so sure. why not make that first investment with our money? And so mm. the referral program allows our community to refer their friends and family mm -hmm. and everyone that gets referred gets 50 rand to invest mm. and the individual who refers that individual gets 50 rand in free brokerage oh, so you both win you Ooh. both get 50 rand yeah. of value yeah the important part is and that what the what we've learned from our customers is that once you've made your first investment so you've mm. used your 50 rand and made your first investment mm. Mm. it's over you are going to continue to invest for the rest of your <laughs> life because you've got your sure. you've eliminated that barrier yeah. you're no longer scared of it you no longer doubt yourself that you're not capable of doing it sure and you've suddenly got a reason to pitch up and log in and check on your 50 rand every day mm. and so the mm. 50 rand is a is a way of just removing a, a, a barrier and making it easier for you to get over your fear of investing mm. and use our money and uh, over three years that money becomes your money uh, and everyone gets rewarded for referring customers. Oh, awesome. So do you actually share insights into some of the best performing companies in, in the JSE? Yeah, we do. So we've got, uh, we've got a research capability uh, internal. Okay. So we deliver research pretty much every day. There's mm. research that will come out on the stocks. Mm. We also buy external research from a couple of companies which we deliver. Mm. And so there's a combination of in-house and outsourced research where we deliver it to uh, our consumers for free our customers for free. Okay. Importantly, I mean, the difference between when I started in investing, which was 25 years ago, literally, mm. you know, back then, if you wanted to know anything about a stock, you had to find a stockbroker. Mm. Um, the internet just didn't have the wealth of information it's got today. Sure. Today, if you want to know anything about a stock, you can follow the CEO on Twitter. Mm. You can follow investment analysts on sure. Twitter. You can follow asset managers on Twitter and mm. you can learn from all of their moves and you get to ask questions. If you see the engagement that happens on Twitter around investments, Super. it's amazing. It's amazing. So amazing. you don't yeah. need to be an expert. You sure. just need to follow the crowd, make sure you get uh, uh, follow the right people, learn from their every move, ask questions uh, and get invested. Oh, that's proper. So tell me, Maybe something, something that is outside is equities mm. now. A, a lot of people are actually talking about the fourth industrial revolution right now. And um, I mean, a, a lot of people who actually contribute towards this topic around fourth industrial revolution. Um, our government is speaking about it. Corporate sector is actually speaking about it. The biggest question is, are we ready for it? Um, and can we actually do it as a country right now, actually? You know, I mean, it's an interesting question. and. It's not one at the cost or the expense of another. Mm. Are we ready for it in all sectors? No, we're not. Mm. But are we ready for it in urban South Africa? For sure. Okay. If you think about the infrastructure um, required to enable the fourth industrial revolution and you look at where things like data costs are going and access to services, mm. in urban South Africa, 
I guess we're ready for it. In rural South Africa, we're not. Sure, I mean, if you think sure. about someone living in a rural area and their access to participate on just things like a smartphone, mm. very restricted, still relatively expensive to what they earn. Mm. And so in, the, in rural South Africa, potentially not. Uh, and so it's a sort of, it's a game of two halves. Sure. In urban okay. South Africa, we're ready for it. In urban South Africa, we've got to still fix infrastructure. We've got to do, you know, first industrial revolution and second, mm. we've got to get infrastructure to them, we've got to get services to them, and we've got to enable them and educate them. And so it's not at one at the expense of the other. We are ready for it in the cities, and I think that's a story of Africa. Mm. In a lot of big African cities, sure. they're ready okay. for the fourth industrial revolution. It is playing out already. Mm. Sure, sure. Uh, but it's not a case that it, uh, it applies or the whole of South of Africa course, can benefit. Um, or, or, or. And, yeah. and, and what, what do you think it will take for us, actually, and how long did it need to take for us, for all of us, to actually um, ride on? Yeah, I mean, uh, the beautiful thing about today mm. is that everything is moving faster than it did yesterday. Sure. And so our ability to move the needle on enabling access, let's say, in a rural area, yeah. it's much easier and much quicker today. Mm. You know, in the old days, we had, to, we had to put lines down and infrastructure. And now we just have to put a modem or a, you know, a, 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 a tower up. Mm. Um, and the other thing is that there are lots of companies competing for your interest. I mean, sure. just think about the telcos. That space is much more competitive than it used to be. Sure. Our data costs are coming down. You've got new entrants like rain coming to market, which mm, are lowering yeah, sure. the cost. Yeah, yeah. And so it's going to happen faster than I think we all, we all expect. Hmm. Um, government's got a huge role to play. You know, we've got to build roads. We've got to put education um, uh, systems in and schemes mm. in. Uh, we've got to get water and infrastructure. We've got some basics we need basic to do. Basic things that we need to get right. Yeah. But, and if we don't get those right, sure. then it's, those people are not going to be able to participate. Yeah. But yeah, I think the political environment that we're operating in is increasingly more encouraging and increasingly um, attentive to these issues. That's and so positive. I'm positive. That's I think that the next decade in South Africa, we could, we could comfortably enable the fourth industrial revolution and say mm. that it's open to everyone. Mm, mm. What do you think the government needs to do right now actually to educate people and get people on board? I think you've got to think about it differently than we have in the past. You know, in the old days, you had to build a school close to a, a rural area mm -hmm. um, in order to educate that sure. um, area. Today, I think if you do public-private partnerships and you put a tower um, with free Wi-Fi and mm -hmm. broadband and deliver education through smartphones and tablets mm -hmm. rather than physical infrastructure, we can do it quicker because it takes a year or years to build schools. Mm -hmm. But to drop a tower and, and do um, you know online education courses and testing mm -hmm. and classroom kind of you know virtual classrooms, I think that we can achieve it much quicker. And so for me, I'd be focusing on mm -hmm. delivering mm -hmm. education to all South Africans in a digital format much quicker. And sure. there, when I say public-private partnerships, I mean, imagine a private school. Let's just take one that I know well, like St. Stivians. They have a curriculum, okay. and that teacher stands up and serves 20 to 30 pupils every day. If we, if we allowed access to that classroom and delivered that access through digital means mm -hmm. to rural areas so that they could sit in classrooms and watch that screen or sit in on their cell phones and watch that screen. Mm. The physical infrastructure to do that is just so easy to do. Mm. Um, mm. And I'm confident that companies would sponsor it and get involved and telcos would be part of the solution. Mm. And so for me, I think we have to think differently. We don't need to build a hundred schools in South Africa. Sure, we sure. need to think about how technology can solve the problem for us faster. because. You know, I think over the last 20 years, we've let, our, we've let South Africans down uh, in hmm. educating them. Um, and I think that if we use the technology of today, we can deliver these things much faster. Hmm. And so we mustn't think about doing things the same way we would have done them 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah, definitely. What, what do you think that entrepreneurs need to be doing in order to take, take advantage of that space as well? I mean, uh, Africa has got so many problems. Mm, definitely. And every single one of them is an entrepreneurial opportunity. Hmm. Because if you solve problems, You've, there's a demand for that sure, solution. Sure, sure. And so as an entrepreneur, Africa is such an exciting place to be. Hmm. Um, you know, if, you, if I lived in America, sure. which has far less problems, it also has less opportunities. Uh, and it's a much more competitive marketplace. Mm. There are a lot mm. more people vying for that same uh, business opportunity. So as an African, I'm excited by the entrepreneurial opportunities that surround me. I mean, I literally get distracted by them every single day because mm. every time I see a problem, it's a potential solution for an entrepreneur to solve. Mm. And I think as young South Africans, we've got to think about entrepreneurship before we think about formal corporate 
um, employment. Mm. Um, and the thing that's going to, we need, again, it relies on government. We need the right incentives mm. and the right infrastructure to support entrepreneurs, to encourage them, to reward them, um, to educate them, to mm. mentorship them. Sure, sure. Um, and for me, there's no shortage, uh, there's no shortage of talented South Africans. Definitely. The infrastructure or the ecosystem to support entrepreneurs mm. is much better than it was 20 years ago. When I built some of my first business 20 years ago, mm. the ecosystem was poor. Mm. Today's ecosystem is much stronger, sure. but there's still a lot more to do to get it on par with places like America or Europe or, or uh, even places like China. Mm. Oh, what do you think about the you know the trade works uh, uh, you know within China and, and America and how it actually does that affect us as as it does as a I mean, you, know, you know these two superpowers it's not <laughs> dissimilar to the old American Russian um, Cold Wars of old uh, sure and there's a lot of ego in the room <laughs> when those two the countries main collide eagles, eh? yeah and you know when I, I can't remember there's an African proverb but I think it's when you know when two buffaloes. Uh, collide anything that you know gets ruined is the ground underneath sure. <laughs> um, and you know it's two buffaloes mm. colliding and there's going to be damage there's going to be you know and we're all going to be affected by it and when do we find ourselves in this space you know <laughs> I think so, South Africa is relatively isolated from it we wear the emerging market sure. um, uh, uh, tag and so anything that affects China has a knock-on effect and, it checks, uh, and affects us mm. for me South Africa's opportunity is Africa. I worry less about what's going on in America and China, mm -hmm. and I'd be more focused on what's going on here. Mm. You know, we, as a, from a technological perspective, from a uh, infrastructure perspective, from a skill set perspective, we should be exporting our skills to solve other African problems that we've already solved here. I mean, mm. I travel a lot in Africa, and every time I come home, I'm reminded how good our infrastructure is. Mm. We mm. sit here and we love to moan about our infrastructure. I mean, we drive down the road and we scream mm. about a pothole. Sure. If you've been to places in Africa, they don't have potholes because they don't have roads. Sure. And you know, I think as South Africans, if we were taking the skills that we had here mm. and utilizing to solve problems that we've solved here in other African markets, sure. we would uh, we'd focus less on what America and China are, mm. are up to. They're obviously important partners to us. They buy our products, we buy theirs. Mm. But for me, I, you know, it's too much ego in one uh, space. And I think the knock-on effects for us are, are limited. No, oh, is it? So for 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 entrepreneurs there's a buzzword about a collaboration right now and what, what's your take about entrepreneurs who are uh, you know in different spaces or maybe in the same space and in, in probably in fintech like yourself and there are ways of collaborating in order to you know produce um, content produce um, you know products and mm. services that can be consumed by the south african market what do you think about collaboration and actually i think it's a key ingredient in order to forge success, successful entrepreneurship in South Africa. Mm, um, mm. You know, for me, most of my lessons have come from failure. And sharing those lessons with new entrepreneurs, collaborating with them, and helping them avoid those kind of failures mm, uh, mm. so that their, their route to success is faster is really important. Collaboration can do that, so mm. shared experiences. The other th reason why I think collaboration is so important is it allows you to scale your business opportunity faster. Hmm. And if you think about it, if I'm, if I, let's just say that my biggest competitor is ABSA Bank. Mm. And you think about Ab ABSA Bank and all the resources and skills so and services can, yeah. and products, I can't compete perceptually. Definitely. But if I partner other sure. entrepreneurs that are doing similar things in the fintech space, and I partner someone who does lending, and I partner someone who does transactional banking, uh, mm. a, a startup neobank, um, and I start, I do other services. Then, in the result, I look just like ABSA, and, I, and oh. together we can compete much quicker. Mm. Whereas if I try and build, rebuild ABSA, sure. it's going to take me decades uh, mm. to do. Mm. And so, for me, fintech should be collaborating to create the next big bank in mm. partnership with each other. Sure. Uh, because the old mentality of, and it is a South African, it's not just South African, it's a global mentality where the big banks, and I'm just using banks because it's fintech, mm. we're going to build everything ourselves. Sure. That's over. They can't move fast enough. And so if we collaborate with startups who are focused on a segment mm. to create mm. a delivery mechanism that rivals the bank or delivery offering that rivals the bank, sure. then the thing that we have ahead of the bank is together we still move faster mm. because we've got all of this mm. capability which is agile, thin and lean sure. and capable of moving much faster. So yeah. I think the next big bank mm. won't be 
built in the same way that Capitec was built, for example. I think mm, the next okay. big bank will be built in partnership uh, with entrepreneurs. Yeah, talking about banks, um, they've been retrenching uh, quite a number of uh, people in, in the country. What do you think has been affecting that? Because uh, a lot of people are actually, you know, saying it's because of the fourth industrial revolution. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, what what do you think is the main contributing factor to us? That I, you know, I think over the last decade, the sort of the prevailing theme in financial services has been lower costs. Um, that's been where everyone has had to compete. Mm, um, mm. And as a result of that, everyone has had to deliver services cheaper. Uh, and you know, that's also been, it's been driven by the fact that one, these startups have got much leaner business models and mm. they deliver them over digital means, so they don't have to have branch infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And so they've been able to deliver low cost, zero banking. Sure. The sure. only response that, you, that the big banks have had has been to cut costs and to create a leaner environment so that they can be more cost effective mm. and deliver similar services. So it's a natural, it's, 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 a, it's a trend that I think is going to continue to play out. Banks are going to get smaller in terms of their operating overheads um, and more efficient and effective. Look at the introduction so, of Time Bank, eh? Yeah. yeah, I mean, look at that. And, and you know, I, you know there are lots of, I've looked at a lot of the new startup banks. Mm. I mean, the footprint of those businesses is just so much smaller. Mm. You know, essentially, they build a technical in, ar architectural infrastructure that they can sure. deliver over mobile phone. They yeah. have no physical infrastructure, 200 IT developers, and that's it. Hmm. And you know that that compared to Absa that has buildings in Santon and in town and in every mm. single centre. Mm. So you know this fourth indi industrial Industry. revolution is challenging the way we did business. Mm. It's not. It's interesting to note or that someone like Capitec is growing the fastest rate, sure. continues to build physical infrastructure, mm. continues to build more branch networks, mm. and maybe they know something that we don't. You know, maybe there is still a huge amount of value for people to walk into a branch and be able mm. to deliver, uh, the, get the service. And so the jury's out. I remember 20 years ago when the internet was in its foundation state, everyone said it was the death of the salesman. But the internet, oh, yes, I remember. <laughs> there are more salesmen today than there were then. Sure, and sure. It's actually enabled a new way of selling. Sure. And all it's and it done is work. made sales more efficient. So now we have these digital channels that give us leads and optimize oh, those leads. Yep. But at the end of the day, we still have salesmen delivering sure. a service. And I think that's the same for banking. We're going to redefine how we bank, when we bank, when we want to see someone. It's mm. going to be more efficient and more effective at a lower cost. But fundamentally, I think that banking over time will transform itself and create more jobs. So it's yeah. not a case that they're going to retrench uh, all forever, but those jobs will be in different places. Sure. You know, something like big data um, or artificial intelligence, those are areas where I think mm. banks are going to be hiring sure. hundreds and hundreds of people. Uh, and so, uh, you know, every time there's an innovation in an industry, everyone says, you know, at the cost of jobs. Mm. But I don't believe there's, and I, I haven't found any research that supports that. Sure. In fact, all the research says that any innovation creates more <coughs> jobs than it ever destroyed. Sure. And so we shouldn't be scared of losing jobs. We should be thinking about where do we place mm. those people? How do we transform their skills and get them ready for the them? next phase oh, of their definitely. career? Sure. And, and something that you mentioned about digital marketing. What I, how are you actually using um, digital marketing as easy equities? That's a follow-up question, the first yeah. one. And someone one looking into AI. Um, how do you plan on implementing AI within easy equities and also other platforms that you, you, you have under Purple Group? Yeah. At the center of our digital marketing is inspiring storytelling. So we love to tell the stories of our customers, their mm. journeys from the first time day that they invested to now five years on. Mm. Um, and so we use our customers as the storyline um, and we market that to people and everyone finds an affinity. Hmm. So someone okay. who feels that they who have an aff has affinity with you will translate your experience, say, well, I'm a bit like you. And so, mm. I'm gonna, and so we use our digital marketing centered around hmm. inspiring storytelling. <laughs> around that, there's a huge amount of education that we do. So lots of uh, digital content that supports okay. Uh, videos, YouTube channel, Facebook, Twitter, all those kind of things. Mm. They try and unpack investing into very bite-sized uh, delivery packages. We don't, we're mm. not asking you to do five-hour courses, we're asking you to attend to five minutes sure. uh, a week, a month, whenever you can endure. So that's mm. what you're sort of at the, at the center of our strategy. Importantly, you'll find us in places that you won't find other financial services. Hmm. And so you will never see a brand advert like Alan Gray's on DSTV come sure. from Easy Equities because that's not where we find our customers. We mm. find them in the unexpected places, uh, places where South Africans live and work. Where are they? 
It's, <laughs> this is a good example. I mean, put sure. your camera can spin around and have a look. <laughs> but this is where our customers live. Sure. They, are, they, they are urban dwellers. They live in the, and work in the city. Yeah. Um, and so this building, this area is exactly where our customers are. And it's representative mm. of who we are as well. Mm. Um, your second question what was... AI. 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 Implementing it into within your So, platforms. you know, we're doing a little bit, in, uh, but, not, but we're, not, we're scratching the surface. Okay. Our data set is growing so fast and getting uh, very interesting. And we now want to start using that data set mm. and applying AI to give that intelligence back to our customers. Mm. But we're really, for us, the focus on the business has been scaling uh, the platform architecture to keep up with the growth of our customer base and two, winning over the customer, locking in distribution channels and winning new customers. Over the next five years, AI will become a much more important part of our business. Today, mm. it's a very small part. Mm. Okay, awesome stuff. Charles, thank you so much for joining us. And what are your last words for the entrepreneurs, especially during the Global Entrepreneurship Month, hey? Yeah, I mean, for me, entrepreneurship, uh, I've, the things that the lessons I've learned from my career is fail. Fail fast, celebrate your failures and learn from them. Don't be scared <laughs> of them. Sure, um, sure. No one teaches us how to fail, no mm -hmm. one. Um, and so get comfortable with failing because it's very rare that your first opportunity is a success. Yeah. The second one is surround your people, yourself with people that are smarter than you, but importantly share your passion. Hmm. And if you get those ingredients right, and as a team you are completely comfortable um, failing, but pursuing your passion and mm. ensuring that you have the right culture that is, that is embraces failure and accepting of challenges. We, we must disagree if we're gonna move forward. Sure, definitely, um, definitely. Those are the sort of kind of key ingredients mm. um, that have helped me in my career. And I took a long time to learn them. You know, I wish I could, could start my career 20 years ago with those mm. lessons. <laughs> um, but I'm pleased I managed to, I managed to you know, forge them out even though it's 20 years later. Sure. Toss, you've been cool. great. Awesome. Thanks very much. Thank you yeah. so much, Bob. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us. This is um, Charles Savage. Uh, he's savage. <laughs> and um, he, he's a, a CEO of Purple Group and Easy Equities. I want you guys to go and check out the platforms. Um, Easy Equities, I've been you know, a beneficiary of that platform a, a massively because I've been referring a lot of people to the platform. And I want you guys to look at it, um, check it out, try investing. You know, Let's have financial healthy um, young people in South Africa. Thank you so much, guys, for join, joining us during the Global Entrepreneurship Month. Um, it's been awesome. Thank you for joining us for the first episode.